All right, all right, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be today. Welcome to English, vocabulary, and pronunciation. This lesson is actually about conversation, which includes a lot of vocabulary and pronunciation, but I'm going to give you today seven secrets, seven tips, seven seven wise pieces of advice to have better small talk conversations. I know that many of my students struggle with this. They learn vocabulary, learn grammar, learn pronunciation, but don't develop the skill to carry on a conversation back and forth, to do it in a comfortable, natural way. So there are some secrets, some tips, some advice that I can share with you that will help you to do this more effectively and in a more comfortable way. So pay attention. This is important, important stuff that I'm sharing with you. Three new videos every week. Don't forget to subscribe and to like and share this video. If you find it useful, I'm sure you will, of course. So let's get started with today's topic. Seven secrets for great small talk or better small talk conversations. So I'm going to go through each of these one by one, explain a little bit. Feel free to go back and review. Number one, ask why and how questions. Start a question with the word why or how, okay? Because many times if you ask a what question, you might only get a short answer, a short, simple answer. You want more information from the person that you're talking to. You're asking for more information. If you say, what is your favorite food? They might say pizza. Pizza is my favorite food. And that's it. That's the end of the conversation. But if you ask why, why do you like pizza? Then the person has to give more information. They have to share more, give more details. Okay. So why questions and how questions give you a person's true feelings and make them give thought about how they answer. So a couple of examples. Why do you think that happened? Why do you think that happened? Instead of saying, what happened? There was an accident. Oh, okay. Why do you think that happened? Well, I think that happened because there were these two people and they weren't paying attention and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So you get more information. Second example is how did you like the show? You don't say, did you like the show? Because the answer could be yes or no. And that's it. So you want more information. How did you like the show? I really liked the show. Why? Ah, uh, because it was very entertaining. It was exciting. The actors were great. The story was wonderful. You get more information when you ask better questions. Number two, tip number two, be curious. And this is kind of tied to number one. It's kind of connected, kind of related to number one. Be curious. If you are not interested, you can't be interesting. So if you don't show interest, if you're not curious, people will think that you're boring. You want to be interesting too. So you have to be interested in the other person. So how do we do this? We ask open ended questions, open questions, open questions require more than a one word reply. So going back to number one, did you like the show? That's a yes or no. That's a closed question. But if I say, tell me about the show, that's an open question. What did you like about the show? How was the show? That requires more detail in the answer. So in my blue box at the bottom here, my example says, did you, hmm, hang on, did you enjoy the class? And I mark, you see, I mark that out because the answer could be yes or no. 
it's too short. That's a closed question. If you ask an open question, what did you enjoy about the class? See, now I can't say yes or no. I have to give information. What did you enjoy? Well, I enjoyed the teacher, of course. The topic was interesting and it wasn't too long. It was very interesting. Okay, so there's a difference between closed questions and open questions. I teach this a lot in my groups because open questions create more conversation. Closed questions kill conversations. Kill conversations. You could stop them dead in their tracks if you just answer, ask a yes or no question. So remember, and I'm going to go back and review all seven of these at the end. So just don't worry, at the end, we'll do a, a full review. Number three, ask for advice. Ask for advice. People love to talk about themselves and their own experiences, their own opinions, their own thoughts, their own feelings. Ask somebody for advice. People love to feel empowered. If you say, I need your help, I need your advice. People love to feel helpful. They feel important when you ask them for advice. For example, can you suggest a good restaurant for us? Can you suggest a good restaurant? So if you ask me that, I think you feel that my opinion is valuable and it makes me feel important. So when somebody asks me a question about advice, it makes me feel important, it makes me feel empowered, like I want to be helpful. And that is a good way to have a small talk conversation. Number four, number four, be a good listener. Sometimes we forget, we focus on speaking. We just want to talk, 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 but you have to listen. You have to be a good listener. Nobody wants to listen to you the whole time. They want to provide their input also. So I wrote this, this is an old saying, you have two ears and you have one mouth. And there's a reason you should be listening more than you should be speaking. So pay attention, don't interrupt. Ask for more information. Be curious. These are all tied together. All seven of these are tied together. True listening involves hearing what the person is saying and also paying attention to their nonverbal communication. Nonverbal, we'll, we'll talk about in one of the next points. There's body language, there's eye contact, there's facial expression, there's the way somebody is standing or sitting. There's body language, that's non-verbal communication. They're communicating, but they're not saying anything. And lastly, on this list about being a good listener, the three magic words are, tell me more, tell me more. Say more about it with my, with my students. If I don't feel like a, the answer was very detailed, I'll say, tell me more. Say more about that. Tell me more about that. Number five. Number five, obey the 20 second rule, okay? So this is interesting, this is important. The first 20 seconds you have a green light, green means go, and you're free to speak. You can talk, 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 share your feelings. But remember the next 20 seconds you might start to lose the interest of the person you're talking to. So be cautious Next 20 seconds is yellow light. So maybe 20 to 30 seconds, you're safe. But after 30, 40 seconds, red light, it's time for you to stop talking and to start listening. So give the other person a chance to speak. Otherwise you will be seen as boring. You don't want to be boring. You want to be interested. You know, people who ask a lot of questions, even if they don't say a lot, they're considered to be really interesting for some reason. When people listen a lot, they're seen as interesting. And I think that's psychological because you like to talk to people who seem interested in you. So a good listener is seen as interesting. So green light, yellow light, red light. Try not to speak for more than 30 seconds without turning the conversation over to the other person. Don't be boring. Don't be boring. Number, number six is body language. We mentioned this earlier. Body language includes the things on this list. Eye contact. Look at somebody in the eye. Look directly in the eye. 
don't be looking over here or over here or even over here or down here look at somebody directly okay and no, number two no, next one is sincere nodding so don't just give a blank stare to somebody you can do like this just move your head a little bit it just shows that you're listening shows that you're understanding shows that maybe you agree or you're enjoying listening to what they're saying okay so also leaning in showing interest if you're back like this listening it doesn't show that you're very interested but if you lean forward a little bit maybe most likely you seem more interested and also smile smile it shows that you're paying attention so you're nodding you're smiling you're making eye contact and don't cross your arms don't cross your arms like this it's a it shows like a it's a it's a barrier it's blocking it's a it's protection between you and the other person and it's seen as uh, aggressive or uninterested so don't cross your arms keep your arms uncrossed and lastly feeling the other person doesn't care about what you're saying will kill a conversation so if I don't feel like you care about what I'm saying, I'm just going to stop talking. So our conversation is over. And the same goes for the other side. If you, if you seem like you don't care about what the other person is saying, then that's going to, that's going to kill the conversation. All right. And tip number seven, secret number seven, put down the phone. Oh my God. Do you ever talk to somebody who's holding their phone and you're talking to them and they keep doing this? Mm -hmm. If somebody's talking to you and you're trying to tell a story and they keep doing this, like this, uh-huh, yeah, right? Now, do you think that person is really interested or are they distracted? They're not focused on you. They're focused on their phone, put down their phone. So the presence of a phone can ruin a conversation. Leave it in your pocket, your bag, even on the table. We put our phones on the table, but maybe put it face down. Put it upside down so you can't see the screen. If you're expecting an important email or call, just tell the other person. Say, if I have to pause for a minute, I'm expecting a, a, a quick message or an email or a phone call. I apologize in advance. Okay, so these are all, these are all things to remember when you were thinking about your conversation. Make sure I didn't move my screen too much. Okay, so let's review. Let's review these seven secrets, these seven tips. How to have smarter, more effective, more interesting small talk conversations. Number one, ask why and how questions, open-ended questions. Number two, be curious, ask for more information. Number three, seek advice. Ask somebody for their opinion or their suggestion, their recommendation. Make them feel important. Number four, listen, 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 listen. Be a good listener. Remember the, the red light, yellow light, green light. That's number five, the 20 second rule. 20 seconds of red, 20 seconds of green, then yellow, then red, stop. Number six, Body language, smile, nod your head, uncross your arms. And lastly, put your phone away, no phone. Forget about your phone, okay? Um, so that's all. If you have any questions, if you have any questions, please write them in the comments section down below, questions or comments. I'd be happy to hear from you to answer any questions that you might have. Please remember, I make three new videos every single week just for you so that you can be a better English speaker, better at communication, understanding, listening, speaking, grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation, everything. Lots of different topics, lots of different topics in English. There are unlimited things to talk about regarding English. So that's why I can do three per week just for you. So subscribe to the channel. That really helps me out a lot. The channel is growing slowly 
and I enjoy helping people online to improve. So until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. Be a better small talk conversationalist. I hope these tips are helpful. Have a great day. I will see you next time and take care, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.